Hi everyone, it's Jenny B from Jenny B Studios. That's Jenny with an I. Today I thought we might have a little chat about soft pastels and soft pastel products. Just as a guide in case you need to add something to Santa's list this year. So come and join me as we go through a range of different products in soft pastel. Pastels are a wonderful medium. They're bright, vibrant and probably the most oldest medium that we know of. They have a long life and they come in a range of different types of product. But first let's start with paper. So I'm going to start with the, a My Tennis um, pastel pad. Now this comes in a range of different colours. And they're quite a lovely subtle kind of colour for the paper. They have a smooth side and a textured side. Now the textured side sort of gives more of a honeycomb effect uh, and it will take a few layers of pastel. It does depend when you're using the honeycomb side as to the effect that you'd like to get from the pastel. It's quite easy to blend your pastel with this paper. However, I do tend to prefer the smoother side when I'm working with it. And the smoother side is, is wonderful both for the pastel stick and the pastel pencil. Again, nice and easy to blend. And then I can come back over with a pastel stick. So it's really nice and handy when I'm traveling to be able to, you know, have one of these pads out handy. This is a similar version from a different manufacturer and it's actually quite smooth on both sides and it's a lovely paper for drawing on. Um, and I do get some beautiful effects from that but neither of these papers will hold a lot of layers and if you've watched my other videos you know I like to work with a lot of layers sorry about that truck that just went past now both of these papers come you can either buy them as paper or just in pads when you're starting out it is a nice way to start and it's like I said it is quite affordable the next one we'll look at is another product by Canson and it's the my tennis touch so you might have heard of other people demonstrating on this paper I tend to use it for landscaping so when I'm outside landscaping I tend to use this paper the other thing I love about it is you can use it for a pastel wash it's quite a gritty paper and without going into great detail about how it's made and blah 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 um, you can lay down your pastel quite easily and you can build up quite a few layers with it the final one is the good old pastel mat so this is a more expensive paper again and I do say to you please be aware that I personally have found a lot of faults in the papers so not every sheet when I buy a pad um, so do check it thoroughly but with pastel mat I can build up a lot of layers and get some great detail now we're on to the soft pastel so the ones we're looking at now are the pan pastels which are made in the United States uh, they're a very very soft pastel uh, and they make around about 92 different colors the pastel I'm holding in my hand is a schmicky pastel. And this is a German pastel and they make around about 400 colors, I believe. And they're like painting with cloud. I absolutely love them and I tend to use the very softest uh, of my stick pastels to the final layers. When I'm starting out, I use uh, a medium soft pastel. This one here is an uh, art spectrum. They make about 180 different colours in this range and I've used them for a lot of years. 
the art spectrums from Australia. The Rembrandt is a Holland pastel. Again, it's it's a medium soft pastel. There's around approximately 218 colors. These are pencils. When you're starting out, Derwent make a range of pastel pencils, which are quite affordable. Um, and they are a beautiful um, pencil. That particular set there is uh, English or made in England. And then, of course, my ultimate favorite is my Carbothellos, Stabilo Carbothello pencils. That's a pack of 36. I also tend to use um, the cotton sticks, which I use those for softening down layers. They're absolutely wonderful for doing that. And you might have seen me quite a few times on my other videos using those. Of course, some paper towel. And the hardest of the pastels is Conti sticks. Now I tell all my students, black, white, a deep brown, a ready brown and a light brown is pretty much all you need. But when you're starting, kneadable rubber. And let's talk about some soft tools. So the soft tools I purchased when I purchased my pan pastels. I absolutely love these now uh, and I do tend to use them quite a lot in my working method. Now the soft tools will pick up the pastel, whether it's a stick pastel or a pan pastel. I often work to the side of my paper. I'll lay down some stick pastel there. I can pick it up with my soft tool and away I go. I guess the only downside with these is that you do tend to go through the tips quite a bit. Here is a paper stump and I tend to use that to push the pigment into the paper, especially in finer areas. That's a big soft tool there. And the other thing I use is I have a lot of these little tubs where I liquefy the pastel. And I do that by introducing different mediums. So depending on the pastel stick that you're using, or if you're using the pan pastels, will depend on the medium you can use. So I tend to use water with um, Art Spectrum pastels, or I might use uh, rubbing alcohol, or more preferably, I'll use like a mineral terps. And that'll break down the binder in the pastel and it gives and it just liquefies the pastel so if I need to do a wash under my pastel then what a great way to use some excessive pastel now the other thing I always do is I put if you've seen my video on painting cloth I show you how I actually put a envelope under my painting before I start these are brushes that I do use. So the big um, makeup brush that I just shown you there, I use that to just brush away pastel dust from the surface. This one, which is a, a semi hard brush. Um, and I use that one mainly to take out pastel. And these other two come in handy for some finer detail work especially if I'm liquefying it. I also have a little hand blower and I use that to blow off the pastel from the paper. If there's any pastel falling, which is quite handy because you don't want to blow on your paper. So having that little tool, that's a neat little trick. I also occasionally wear a mask with my pastels. Uh, no, for, only for the reason that if I'm doing painting after painting in pastel, I like to be a bit mindful. I also have an air filter underneath my desk, which is runs three different types of HEPA filters to collect any dust that might be flying around in the room. Now, pastels are considered to be quite a friendly product as, as far as our health concerns are. However, I I work in a studio where I have Bella, my little Maltese Shih Tzu. Now she's head of P 
PR and security and occasionally I have Grace who pops on in. She's my PA and so I like to keep my environment quite clean. I also have a little hand vac here and that's again just to pick up any loose pastel that might be flying around. As we move along I think it's important to note when you're buying pastels to sort of stick to mid-range colors with a few lights and a few darks in there. Often around this time of the year we do find um, sets come become available at very reasonable prices so if you're starting out you might be able to buy a small set of sticks, pencils etc which make up the basis of what you need when you're pastel painting. Guys if you have any questions at all please sing out and let me know. I'm more than happy to help in any way I can. The, there are some other tools. You're not, you want to keep your hands nice and clean when you're working with pastels and I tend to do that by having a clean soft damp cloth, a knife to sharpen my pastels and when I'm working on my easel I use this board. You can see Bella in the background there and some low adhesive tape, painter's tape. So once again, uh, I hope you enjoyed this video guys. Give me a like, a share, share it with your friends and remind Santa you've been good. Bye.